Hello, so here's an interesting question. Uh, apparently about, uh, I think it's over 10% of the UK population now, I think it's about one in six people, is under local lockdowns. Um, but apparently we're not going to have a second national lockdown. But at what point does having loads and loads and loads of local lockdowns equal that you're just having a national lockdown anyway? Because if basically every major city and other bits of counties are having lockdowns, doesn't that mean everybody's locked down? So at the moment, it's about one in six people. But I imagine that's going to keep getting worse as the flu season sort of gets underway and they don't have enough test kits. Because then how do you know if you've got flu or corona or a cold? But hello, everybody. But yeah, it, it's that's the really stupid thing is they're obviously falling short with testing, but they're basically saying what a good job they're doing with testing. It's just it's us misusing the tests because despite the fact they told everybody to go get a test if you think you've been exposed or whatever else, now they're doing the oh only certain people can get a test if they're really ill. I'm all right, Henry. Thank you. That's good, Daniel. Yeah, it's really weird stuck with how YouTube will sometimes share a notification or not. But yeah, I'll see if I can get a thing up about this all this lockdown stuff. Also, apparently Europe's weekly coronavirus cases past March peak now. So we definitely are having a second wave. Um, I suppose that fits all the criteria now, doesn't it? If it's really getting higher than March back when everywhere locked down for the first time. Um, I'm just seeing if there's... Um, a thing on like the BBC about just the UK kind of, you know, being locked down because they were saying about that on LBC earlier. Salty Tide didn't need to be blocked. Why did you block him? Oh, and hide him. But there is somebody else who didn't get blocked, who deserved to be blocked for saying testing is basically a conspiracy. Um, it's I think it's because, Marcus, basically how they're doing it is if you get ill enough that you need ventilation and everything, you go into hospital. Otherwise, you don't because there's the infection risk. Yeah, it's just with a longer hose on it. Oh, that's cool, Peach. I saw you posted something on Twitter, but I didn't get a chance to look at it properly yet. But yeah, that's the problem, isn't it, Daniel, at the moment, is especially if you're somewhere where you can't get a test, you could have any kind of illness that makes you feel pretty shitty, but you wouldn't know if it's corona or not. Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. What I did most of today was just did a load of jobs around my granddad's house for him, like weed in his garden, killing some moss on his roof, that sort of stuff. Because um, obviously he's not, he's kind of too old to do all that stuff himself now, so I don't mind going over and doing it for him. But yeah, that's crazy, Daniel, because like when I had my test not that long ago, was it last month? I can't remember. All I literally had to do was just drive to a very local test centre and then. Um, you know, it was just literally drive in, here's your test, you know, we'll let you know in about a day what the results are. But now it just seems like it's crazy, like people are having to go, you know, drive hours or they just can't get a test. Uh, yeah, we're having a second wave, basically, Salty Tide. Um, the issue is that basically lots of people are saying, oh, it's fine now because it's mostly younger people getting it and they're not dying at such a high rate. The problem is that they're going to eventually pass it on to other people. Yeah, I have no idea Shed on Fire. A lot of this stuff just doesn't make sense anymore, does it? Because I think the problem was as sort of over the top as like having a big national lockdown was, at least when they did that, you could kind of understand it because it was very simple. I think now all these different places have different measures. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, Ivan. Um, I've got a review sort of thing filmed of it with some tests done on it. Um, I've got it here at the moment, but at the moment everything's background levels. The battery life is really good on it, though. Let's um, let's get it up on the phone and just see what the battery life is um, saying for it. But it should still be um, pretty much full battery. I think it was yesterday. And it's just going to have to rescan the Bluetooth for some reason, but it's already picked it up on here. There we go. Um, 
I'll enable silent mode, otherwise it annoys me on notifications. But... Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, Oliver, does it? Oh, um, why, why would we need tests? An atom tag is one of these, T. A little tiny Geiger counter decimeter thing. That runs off a of phone's Bluetooth. So as you can see, size-wise, pretty low. Um, but in terms of um, how it works, it just literally reports onto your phone. Yeah, the battery life is still really good because it's still showing full battery. Uh, and that's not had a charge since last Friday or last Saturday. Yeah, the sooner we get a vaccine that works, obviously, just in vapor, the better. But obviously, all the problem is you keep getting all the people going, oh, it's all made up. The vaccine is there to give you autism or put the Bill Gates nanobots in your body or whatever the fuck it is now. Um, you know, it, it it's kind of depressing, isn't it? It's like I do def I certainly don't think the government's doing a good job handling this. But if you think this is how they're going to, you know, enslave you to the new world order or whatever people are saying, um, I think you think the government's far more competent than they actually are. That's um pretty funny then, Paulie, that she literally is a living meme. Literally normally always eBay or people send me Marnix. Weirdly shed on fire, there is a Stephen King film, I think it's called Cell, isn't it? Which is about where cell phones start killing people. And I'm like, oh, it's literally the 5G conspiracy well before any of the 5G stuff ever came out. It's like it turns people into like killer zombies if they like receive a phone call from like these new phone towers or something. It's kind of like the equivalent of maximum overdrive but instead of trucks randomly killing people, it's mobile phones. Yeah, it's completely stupid, isn't it, Daniel, like all this stuff? Because it's like the stuff thing I'm saying about pre-phoning, what is it, like 111 one, one or whatever it is, isn't it? If you, like, need accident and emergency. It's like if you're if somebody's taking you into accident and emergency because you're ill but not ill enough to call 999, you probably can't pre-book, can you? Because it's serious enough. It's just you're going in there rather than wasting an ambulance's time. Uh, not ionizing radiation poorly, no. I've not actually heard much about Canada at all during all of this radiac maniac. Like, everybody will keep pointing to the United States of, like, some states doing okay and then lots of states not. Uh, I think that's the same all over the world, T, sadly. Um, because, you know, the thing seems to be with it that, um... You know, there's people that just literally think it doesn't exist or, you know, it's all a conspiracy. You know, like, oh, I'm not going to follow any sort of hygiene regulations because it's all made up. Yeah, this is the problem because in the UK, right, they literally have been saying for months when kids go back to school, the cases are going to go up and we need to be ready for it. What do you know? The cases start going up and we're not ready for it. I've not heard of 2.0, Mr. Livera, but I have to check that out if it's, you know, like, literally what 5G people believe. Yeah, who could have guessed, even though at one point they're like, oh, we might have to close other things before schools reopen to keep the r naught rate, you know, quite balanced. And then they're literally like, nah, let's just open everything, because otherwise the economy is going to get damaged. Oh, shit, everybody's getting infected again. But like I said, I don't have any answers to how you'd actually handle the lockdown stuff, as I've said before. Um, we can nitpick what the government does, but, you know, I, I wouldn't really know what to do any better. All I'd have said to people is just make sure you observe hygiene rules, which a lot, sadly a lot of people don't. The problem was in a lot of places before kids went back to school, they were literally getting no education. That was the issue. Yeah, see, this is the thing I don't get, Marcus, is when there's really strange rules where some people need to be tested and some don't. 
because clearly that's where it's going to get in if you're not testing in certain places. You know, because you won't know, will you, until it's too late if people are infected or not. What's her name, Marcus? Is it something like Carrie Lamb? Um, who's in charge of it? Something like that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid I can't comment on the school stuff because I'm a bit too old to know anything about all that. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I'm not at school at the moment with all the shit going on. Uh, which whistleblower is this shed on fire? This sounds very interesting. Um, the thing is with, with it, like, as I said, I, I do not know if it's a bioweapon or not. Um, but it, it's certainly done enough economic damage. And I certainly think people in the future might think, hey, if we want to fuck up the global economy... This is way better than, like, you know, a bomb going off somewhere. Um, but, yeah, it's... I know people have said that, but I don't know if they've had any proof that, you know, that's the thing. Because the problem is you'll get a lot of people randomly say stuff, but unless, you know, they're a very qualified individual and they've written kind of like a peer-reviewed paper on it, I wouldn't take it too seriously. That's, that's the problem with a lot of science, that a lot of science is kind of guesswork until you can prove it. Because don't forget, the guy that was totally disgraced for saying vaccines cause autism was a doctor, and it turned out he had no fucking clue what he was talking about. You know, and he was kind of doing it for publicity, which is kind of just because somebody's a doctor doesn't make them right. You know, as much as they're more qualified than the regular person, it doesn't mean a doctor can't be wrong. Yeah, here's the thing, Shadon Farker said, I don't know if there's any evidence if it is a, vi a bioweapon or not, but I think after this has all happened, seeing as how much economic damage this will do to the entire world, people are going to start going, oh, we need more bioweapon research and defense now, aren't they? Yeah, this is the problem, Justin Vapor, as I've said. Like, as much as the government keeps fucking up over here, and I mean, we can tell they're fucking up because some countries aren't fucking up as badly as ours. Um... You know, I, but yeah, they're certainly not helping themselves, are they? Where they say, oh, we'll do something and then they don't do it. And then something bad happens and then they go, oh, no, it's not our fault. Um, Camus says, the biggest mistake made when telling people about masks was that masks would protect other people instead of themselves. The government said, wear masks to protect yourself. Everybody would use them. Exactly. If they said wearing a mask protects you and other people, as in it's a filtered mask. Um, more people would do it, wouldn't it? Because, oh, it's protecting me. But the problem is that when you get selfish people, they take the attitude of, I don't care if it's not protecting other people because it's them, not me. I'd, I'd agree with you there, yeah. The thing is, I don't think they're really furthering their powers, though, are they, shed on fire? It's more like, oh, let's embarrass ourselves over and over and over again. Um, I personally, if you mean the four sheeter F2 or the A4, I per prefer, uh, personally say I prefer them to the Furnes, but both are quite good masks. Um, yeah, Oscarus, um, a four sheeter F2 A4 with a P3 filter would be absolutely fine for working in dusty environments. Yeah, it's th this is the problem, isn't it? That I still keep getting comments on a lot of videos when I try and get around to replying to them saying, oh, no, it's not true. A mask won't protect you because the government told me not, you know. But then all of a sudden, but the government now tells me masks do protect me, you know. It's, um, you know, if you know how a filter works, you know um, why it protects you. So it's not great, not terrible, is it, Peach? At the moment, uh, I'm staying away from spirits just because I said, like I said, you know, I'm trying to cut down a lot on drinking at the moment because during lockdown I start drinking way too much. The thing is, Salty Tide, it's like democratically protesting is something people should definitely be allowed to do. But it's fucking stupid doing it at a time like this. 
uh, don't incite violence against anybody. Because, I mean, it doesn't set a very good precedent, is it? does it, if people are protesting against police brutality or whatever, and then your response is get the police to beat them up or kill them. Um, but, yeah, I think... I think there is uh, certainly a lot wrong at the moment with people deciding now is a good time to protest. All right, cool, shed on fire. We'll see if I can find that at some point. Let's see, you, Ivan, if you're off. Yeah, well, exa exactly that. A lot of the people protesting at the moment are using it as an excuse, like with any sort of thing, like... Oh, I've got this cause I can latch on to now, so I'll use it as an excuse for violence. Yeah, this is the thing, Daniel. I've I've raised this before, but this is the thing, isn't it? Like, generally, lots of people used to argue that it was unfair that they couldn't wear masks in certain places because, you know, oh, the CCTV's picking up my face, you know, and they can use the facial recognition cameras and all that. So now people are allowed to literally wear a mask everywhere, so it's harder to be ID'd. They're like, no, it's the government muzzling me. Um, the problem is I think there's a certain group of people, and when I say that, I mean almost like professional whiners. I don't know what, that, what word you'd use for them. Where literally anything they're told to do, they argue that they need to do the opposite. And it doesn't matter how sensible it is, you know. Um, you can talk about how bad the BBC is, random sod, because I have no love for the BBC at all. I sometimes link to BBC news articles just if I'm providing a source for something I'm talking about. But in terms of the BBC TV license, it's basically we can't make content anybody wants to watch anymore. So you're going to be forced to pay for it, whether you like it or not. That's the BBC's attitude, in my opinion. The problem is delay psycho. I don't want to get too much into politics, but it also define liberal because the word liberal is kind of a tainted word now because liberal used to just basically mean somebody who wasn't in favor of big government control. You know, liberal and libertarian are basically the same thing, politically speaking. But I think in America, the word liberal now means basically like socialist, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, in the UK, a liberal is actually somebody who is like not in favor really of... Um, government powers, you know, they're in favour of the opposite, which is certainly, um... <laughs> yeah, hopefully OJB, that person isn't positive, but yeah, the problem is, like I said, I had to get a test, I didn't have to get a test, but like about three weeks ago, whenever it was, I got a test, because somebody I worked with either tested positive or had like their boyfriend test positive, it was something like that, and because obviously... I'm probably in that group of people where I might be all right if I get it, but I could pass it on to somebody else who was vulnerable. I definitely wanted to get a test then to find out if I'd had it or not, you know, or it was in my system. But then you had all the people going like, oh, you're a slave to the system if you go and get a test, and also all the other people going, no, you're wasting a test because that's not serious enough to, in, you know, get a test. You can't win with some of these people. Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you, WT Oasis. Yeah, well, the Lib Dems in the UK shed on fire certainly don't act very liberally at times. Um, but I just mean liberal in general, or how the word liberal is meant to mean. You know. uh, the same thing happens in the UK, Tyric, when we had the, like, the 2011 riots. Originally, it was over, um, similar to all the American stuff, a black guy being shot by the police. And, you know, within a day, it had turned into looting, unfortunately, because everybody was like, oh, there's a, like a protest going on. And it wasn't just with those. It was like with a student protest as well. Some people legit turn up to protest peacefully and then you get a load of dickheads go, oh, this is our good excuse to start looting because the police are stretched. Isn't that in like California and some of the other Western places, Paulie? I know there's some really bad forest fires in America at the moment, but I've not actually heard too much about exactly where they are. I know it's normally West Coast you get a lot of fires, isn't it? Yeah, Radioactive Cow. The thing is, it's unpleasant, but it's not painful. It makes your eyes water a bit, but compared to like a load of other medical things, it's not a painful test. But yeah, I think... All right, Thomas. 
I think the big problem, though, is, you know, people doing the attitude of, oh, I've been asked to do something, so I won't. That's good random sod. As, as we said before, you know, filtered masks are always better, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, if you are going to wear a mask like that, at least check it works, because I when where like my parents were given like a load of masks like that to wear by certain things, I was like, right, let's do a lighter test on all your masks and see which ones actually do anything. Because some of them just literally like not wearing a mask. Somebody was asking me, well, am I currently under cocaine? I look far too tired to be under cocaine, don't I? I don't think you know how cocaine works. Out, out of all the drugs, <laughs> I'm certainly not on uppers. Yeah, that, that's, um, thanks, Shellonfire, yeah. Uh, am I at Nike Care yet? I must be very close to it. 89974, right? Hopefully in a day or two I'll be at 90k then, and then it just depends kind of on YouTube's algorithms how long it takes to get that last 10k. Are you going to actually leave any proper comments, or are you just going to ask me, am I currently under the influence of any drugs? Um, because you're going to have to be guessing a long time to get an answer right there. Um, did you, oh, did you delete your comment, Hamas? Because I was just going to read that and reply to it. Oh, it's, it's a general weirdo, that guy. Well, I suppose he had a weirdo in his name, didn't he? But... Yeah, Um, so, Radiac Minute said, what's your background radiation there? Mine, quite high. Oddly, sorry, off topic. We were getting some smoke from the wires. So, it was, yeah, like Henry said, was the wind taking it all the way up to Canada? That's why it's always just good to have a mask, isn't it, for just a contingency thing. Right, at the moment, the background reading is pretty low. Zero point sort of 13 to 15 microsieverts. Generally, it's about 0 0.2 here, but I'm not going to complain if the background <laughs> reading is lower than normal. But yeah, in my local area, I'd say the background readings are anywhere from 0 0.1 in a very low area up to about 0 0.3. Most of the time in my house, in nearly every room, it's about 0 0.2. Um, so, Batamont said, I bought a MS1 Yugo mask, but when I unpacked it, it was full of moisture and the rubber started becoming liquid. Thankfully, a guy gave me a new one, the best. Was, yeah, the problem is with Yugo masks, for some reason, they have a reputation for melting. I really don't know why. It was something they did with the rubber, um, which is why I was delighted when uh, Marcus sent me that Serbian M3 that it's actually not made from the old weird green rubber they made the first two generations of it from, like the M1, MC1, and the um, M2. I'll d certainly do a 100k special random sod, but I won't film it until it's quite close to the time. Because if I'm getting the current amount of subscribers I'm getting per month, let me check Morning Fame, not Morning Fame, um, what's this one, Social Blade? Uh, currently, I'm on like 700 subs a month, so it might be still like a year uh, till I'm at 100k, depending on YouTube's algorithm. You know, bear in mind, at some point during some of the lockdown stuff, I was getting like 4k, I think, subs a month. It can really vary just depending on how much YouTube shares your videos. Right, I don't know if the comments are broken, because I've not seen any new comments in a few minutes. So I'm going to see if I can do pop-out chat, and then I'm going to see if it starts loading the chat up again. Right, that's working. Okay. Right, if you have if you want me to answer a question, you'll have to re-ask it, because the chat basically lagged out. Um, right, my Osprey didn't come with any of the soft panels. Um... But from what I know about British body armor, uh, Christian, it's probably going to be either level 2 or level 3A, depending on which generation of it it was. Because um, it's the same with the ECBA fillers. The green filler like that's in mine, I think, is level 2. But I think later on they did a black filler that was 3A. Yeah, the S10 is a great mask. They're a better mask than the S10, don't get me wrong. But the S10 is very good, but it's not worth the money people want for them at the moment. Uh, well, the PMK3 is a lot more modern, James, but the PMG is kind of just simpler. Yeah, I certainly do, Tyric, because it contaminated my Terra P when it came down in the rainwater, and I started measuring the rainwater. 
Yeah, well, Shed on Fire. Weirdly, there is a video I've got coming out this week. I finally filmed it, and it's. I'm going to get the board in a minute and hold it up to prove that I've actually done it and filmed it. But it's about um, the different sort of radiation measurements for, like, radiation danger of exposure. Um, so, right. For the people saying if you're forced to keep one gas mask, I'd have to pick a good mask, like one I'd actually use, you know, rather than... And it's quite hard to say at the moment, because I don't know if I'd want something panoramic and sort of straightforward or something like the CT-12. Um, uh, Thomas, for testing against particulates, you need a smelly powder. Um, if you've got a combination filter uh, that does particles and vapour, use something like deodorants, banana oil, um, anything like that. Right. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to get my big board to prove that I did something for a video. So I'll be right for a minute. See, I did actually get round to doing it for a video. Ronton Greys, Sieverts, Rads and Rems. But there you go. So for anybody asking how is like the danger of radiation measured, um, it's basically one of these measurements. There's loads of other radiation measurements as well, but those those are the ones that are really of any interest to you if you're worried about the danger of radiation. Things like Ronkins, Rems, Rads, Greys, or Sieverts. Just pick one you like and just convert whatever reading you get in one of the others into it. Um, right, good and cheap and uses 40 millimeter. Right, this is where it gets a bit difficult because the current thing has screwed the prices of masks. Good and cheap. Um... And you mean 40 millimeter NATO, because that makes it even harder. You might still even be able to get German M65s um, at decently priced. That will definitely work with 40 millimeter NATO filters. It's just for a lot of people, the M65s don't fit them all that well. I'd, I'd rather we don't have all the questions again, just regarding what is your favorite mask and things like that. Um, I can't sell masks through Teespring Abdo. How Teespring works, they have a load of things that you can put like images on. And that's it. They do all the rest. Um, there's face masks on the Teespring store now with gas mask pictures on them. So if you wanted something with a picture of a gas mask on that is nowhere near as efficient as a gas mask, you could get those. Um, right. The thing with the Chinese mask, the crazy egg, is you need to actually know which factory it's come from, sadly. Because some of them are made essentially using slave labor and others are made in proper factories. Um, the ones made in proper factories work quite well. The ones made using slave labor, they're like falling apart because probably the people making them are falling apart in concentration camps, sort of gulags, you know, um, because the CCP is evil. But um, so with things like the MF1A and the TF1, if you're lucky, you'll get one that's been made by a proper factory and it's completely fine. If you're unlucky, you'll get one that's been made probably in Xinjiang or whatever it's called and the glues haven't been made properly, and there's lots of problems with them. So I really don't know um, if there's any way you can know in advance if you're getting a proper one or not. Uh, I don't actually know Radiac Maniac off the top of my head. Um, I don't know, Paulie. I don't know with YouTube Super Chats what different ways you have of putting the money through. Mostly, I think it uses your Google wallet, doesn't it? As in what you'd use on the Play Store. Oh, thank you, Henry, if you found him something. I mean, it will depend what country he's in as well, won't it? But $60, to be honest, for a Furnes Wilson is not, or Sparian, whatever they're called, they have different names, don't they? That is not a bad price whatsoever. I would say definitely, if you're thinking about getting a mask, I'd say save $60 up for something like that rather than spending $20 and regretting it. Mm. 
But yeah, for the for the question about radiation, let's use um, the Röntgen measurements. So background radiation, you always want it to be under one milli Röntgen. That's one one thousandth of a Röntgen. If you're being exposed to radiation in like a life and death situation, you can probably survive several Röntgens per hour for about five to ten hours. But it's not recommended. Uh, that might result in radiation sickness, um, you know, and it could certainly result in cancers and things later in life. Um, in terms of really, really scary levels of radiation, um, basically being exposed to over 100 Röntgen um, can, can be deadly because a few hundred Röntgen is pretty much the range of you'll die regarding how good the medical treatment is and how lucky you are in the short term. Like a thousand Röntgen, you're definitely dead. Um I mean, the f there's measurements like sieverts, which are meant to basically calculate how much damage you're taking, kind of, did the radiation hit you in the head, did it hit you in the hand, you know, did it hit you in the dick, and that's how the kind of sievert rating works. Did you eat something radioactive, or was it just outside your body for a bit? Um, it's certainly toxic shed on fire. I think if you have a really, really sensitive ra ionizing radiation detector, like kind of an air, sort of air chamber style, detector so like not necessarily even a geiger counter but something like um, a very sensitive open air ionization chamber and you blew smoke into it you probably would register something on it but not to the degree of it you know making a geiger counter go <coughs> smoke's mostly going to be damaging to you just because it you know burns the inside of your lungs I think everybody, James, nearly here has seen Chernobyl, unless they're pretty new. Funnily enough, it's on my desk at the moment, because guess what? I'm re-watching it again for, like, the fifth or sixth time. Yes, I've got lots of NBC suits. You haven't seen it, Abdo. You need to watch it. It's very good. I mean, it's, it's depressing as hell, right? But it does kind of honor the people there that got really shit on, you know, with um, basically being in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, and being forced to clean it all up. But, um, well, it, it's a lot of it is essentially like a horror film, isn't it? It's just it's not a man with a mask walking around killing people. It's something you can't see, can't taste, can't feel, you know, um, but it's there. It, it's certainly worth a watch. Um, I mean, it's certainly not pleasant to watch at times, like, you know, episode three, I'm not really going to give spoilers because it's a historical thing, episode three where they go to the, you know, hospital where the people who are working at the plant and the firemen are dying from acute radiation syndrome is pretty hard to watch because they are essentially falling apart in incredible pain. And then you've got, like, in the fourth episode where they're having to shoot all the people's dogs and cats, um, you know, because of basically the threat of them taking contamination out. But... I think it is certainly worth watching to understand like the magnitude of what Chernobyl was because sadly you get people online who are like, oh, it's not, it wasn't anything bad. It was just like a little fire at a power plant. Um, there's been a couple markers that have already been booted, but maybe, um, maybe this, this one didn't, they didn't seek this one out. No, I downloaded it, Abdu, and I've not got not got around to watching it. I definitely will watch Lion of the Desert, but it's just one of those things, and the message, but it's just one of those things, you know, where um, it's having the time of the day and thinking to do it when I've got the spare time to watch films like that. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those annoying things where a lot of the time it will be when I'm at work, when I'm like, oh, I could have watched a movie right now, you know, and then I'm sat at home and I'm like, I'm just going to play some Cookie Clicker or some Command and Conquer, you know. Yeah. For anybody wondering, 15,000 Röntgen, um, considering 1,000 Röntgen would be completely fatal to you, pretty much. Um, 15,000 Röntgen is like a dose to kill you 15 times over. So if you had 15,000 Röntgens per hour... Um, Literally a couple of minutes of exposure would be guaranteed to be fatal. Right, yeah, you have to remind me, Abdo, to give you feedback when I've watched it. Uh, oh, I, I've watched lots of horror movies. I watched an interesting one called They're Watching Today. 
uh, which is kind of like a reality TV piss take horror thing. Um, uh, he was making a joke, Henry. Um, sadly, in real life, Daniel, you don't. You don't become Spider-Man. Um, you know. Uh, but, I mean, the original Ronkin was probably a superhero because of all the people he, like, you know, cured using x-rays throughout history afterwards and, like, development of physics. Um, <laughs> with the actual radiation unit, and <laughs> you don't want them at all. Um... But yeah, the one of my favourite recent horror movies is Terrifier, about Art the Clown. Um, I've not got the shirt on, so Marcus doesn't have to worry. But um, it is in the drawer in the other room. But um, yeah, I've, I've watched that a couple of times recently, Richard. But I showed that to my dad um, the day before we went up to Sellafield. Probably a working foul, creamy turtle, uh, just because... Fowls are like, you know, the fucking right arm of the free world. AK-74 would be very close on that risk, you know, list, though. Right, thank you, Crispy of Extra uh, Butter, but I think if you had 15,000 litres of that and you drank that pretty quickly, you'd be just as dead as 15,000 Ronken. Right, Mike, let me know if any of them were good and then give me the names of them and then I'll watch them. Terrifier is quite good, Marcus. It's kind of a throwback to a lot of like 70s and 80s horror films because like the people involved in it were really passionate about kind of just old horror films. But it's also one that, you know, tries to take itself a bit too far in a lot of places. Um, let me click on it, Henry, uh, and see if it... I don't know off the top of my head. It's a plastic filter. It looks a bit like some of the ones Canada, either Canada or America or Britain used at some point. But it might not be. It's just a plastic case 40mm filter, you know. Uh, do you mean an M61A3 puffin guy? That's quite expensive for them now. They used to be out 20 to $30, but they are good masks. Uh, I, I thought you were on about, like, jigsaws in the Saw films then, Daniel, but yes, the amount of fucking jigsaws, you know, if you buy a second-hand jigsaw and then, yeah, fuck sticks, it's, um, you know, not gone. Is that to do with Saw OK9, or is that something completely different? If, if I'm not making any sense, you know the old Saw films? The, the like, little... The killer in that's called Jigsaw, isn't he? Alright, let me Google Jigsaw 2018 now, because I don't think I have seen this thing. Or is this Jigsaw 2017? Oh, there's different films called Jigsaw. This isn't going to help. Um, there's, there's one that says, A young priest in San Francisco, 1990, struggles to complete a jigsaw puzzle of Mrs. Obsession with a beautiful porn star. I probably don't think it was that one, was it? That doesn't sound um, kind of like a horror film to me. Uh, okay, so it's one of the many Saw sequels, is it, Mike? Just one with a different name, rather than being like Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 5. But yeah, um, I didn't think that was the one reading the description. Uh, did you mean Jigsaw 2017 film? Ah, uh, right, so it is, yeah, to do with um, the Saw franchise then, yeah. The eighth Saw film. I've seen the first few Saw films, um... That, you know, I'm not a massive fan of them. I think Saw 1's actually pretty good, but they very quickly just became like a torture porn sort of film, didn't they, rather than... Um... Um, what type of horror films are you into, Tanwas? Because I can think of a couple of really good haunted house sort of movies. Um... Slov PVM. I don't think I've heard of that one either. Let me Google it. Um... The M61 and the M95 are the only Finnish masks I really know, as well as the um, M69 and M71 kind of variants. 
Oh, that's the filter for the M61 there. Yeah, it's an M61 V3. Um, mine's a bit too high to take down from over there. Otherwise, I could literally go and hold it up for you. But yeah, you're on about an M61 V3. So let, what's the F-35 helmet? Let's have a look. Other than being the plane. Or do you mean the one for the plane? I mean... If, if you gave me, if you raised me several thousand dollars, that would go towards the bunker and it would knock, you know, like months of saving off. <laughs> I imagine it is just Soviet clones and Chinese clones or, you know, distributed Marshall on fire. I've never actually really seen much CBRN stuff in North Korea with like them with the gear on. Too many, Tyrick. The actual answer to that is probably in the region of 150 to 200. No, I've not, but that sounds interesting. So is it just things like electric lightnings, phantoms, all those sort of cool things, Tyler? But no, I've not heard of that. But if, if it's cool old Cold War planes, that is cool. Vulcan. Is the last Vulcan still flying now, or did they actually eventually ground it? Yes, I've got lots of bayonets. Oh, not lots and lots and lots of bayonets. I've got a few. Well, most of them, them would be staying here or end up being sold because it would be very minimalist living in there. Oh, the Vulcan's ground in there. That's a real fucking shame. Oh, so they'll do stuff on, like, runways with it, Daniel, but, like, it won't actually fly anymore. It's a shame because they made such a cool roaring noise. Yeah, let me just type in North Korea CBRN and see if there's actually any um, pictures of them with any gear on. But I'd say if I had to put a five pound bet on it, they would have either Soviet or Chinese equipment. Because um, all the all the pictures I'm seeing are like people responding about North Korea's CBRN threat, and it's you know all like Western armies. Um, may, I mean, maybe North Korea is so poor that they've got chemical weapons but they haven't got any protective gear if they accidentally release it but no even on google images there's nothing coming up when i search north korean cbrn of actual north korean soldiers of any gear on but i am going to guess that it would be chinese gear or um soviet gear maybe you know, maybe modern russian stuff if they bought it but take a photo of it puffing guy and upload it somewhere and ask us that's probably your best bet That's fucking stupid, Tyre. I'll sign that, though. I, I don't mean your petition, stupid. I mean the idea of, oh, let, let's, you know, fuck up something worthwhile because we just want to use it as a car park. Um... Abdo, I'd assume it's just because we like buying stuff from other companies because people in charge don't like us, you know, having good industry anymore. That probably sounds very jingo-tastic or whatever, but it is just literally we outsource so much of our stuff, we ruin our own economy, you know, and, like, our own industries. All right, cool, Marcus. I know that, like, the South Koreans had, like, the K1, didn't they, and all those sort of K-designation masks as well as, like, they used to have M17s and things like that, I think. But, yeah, I have no idea with North Korea. No, I didn't know there was an NHS Spitfire. Was that because of the Battle of Britain and all the stuff with the NHS at the moment and Corona? Oh, I missed your super chat, Marcus. Let me scroll up and try and find it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that because it's bright blue. But thank you. He said no clue when the two G German masks will arrive. Well, that's cool. When they turn up, they'll turn up and I can tell you I've got them. And I'll need to find a storage space for all the gear I have to be sending back to you at some point. Because I need to keep that organized so I actually know where it all is. Because currently, I think the Israeli Papas are down there in a box. Um, that Taiwanese mask is there. Um, the S10 at the moment's in the other room. I've just still got that in its box. But yeah, everything's all over the place. Well, 
Lightnings are fucking cool and Evictors fucking cool, so that's cool. But yeah. But yeah, old old Cold War jets are cool. The the electric lightning reminds me a lot of the MiG twenty one actually saying that. I think they're just quite similar looking sort of nose cones, aren't they? Uh, I will be streaming for another fifteen minutes. I'm hoping it's gonna be dark enough. It looks dark enough that once I finish the stream I can go out and film some night vision stuff. All right, cool, Marcus. So you've just got basically a mix, mix match of stuff like quite a lot of nations do. But yeah, do you remember when Britain made stuff that was good, not stuff that was crap or nothing at all? Not in my lifetime, anyway. Um, uh, how far back did Henry post it? Oh, is it this one? Oh, yeah, I see it. Let me open it. The page isn't working. Has YouTube cut the link off? Let me let me try again. No, that link isn't working for me. It's like it's been cut off by the chat. Like, you know, it's not making a full link. It's kind of just cutting it off. Oh, are you on about that thing? That's French right armor that goes over a Kevlar vest. All right, cool, Ty. I'll, I'll definitely do that when I remember to do that. Didn't they modify the Canberra for a load of, like, NASA stuff as well, Daniel, didn't they? Um, if I'm right. Like, it was used for a lot of the early NASA stuff, which is really cool. Um, what was that old... Is it the Aleutian 28? What was the old um, Soviet, like, big jet bomber? That was cool. Um... Yeah, I, I kind of have a thing for, like, bombers. Like, there's something really cool about them. Um, no, Marcus, it wouldn't stop um, a crossbow bolt. It would just ruin it. Because that stuff is, like, impact foam. That stuff's designed so if somebody had a bat on or, like, a stick or whatever and hit you like that, um, it would absorb most of the shock. If somebody had a knife, it would go straight through. Was it the TU-16? I can't remember now. It might have been a TU-16. But well, isn't there the Illusion 28 as well? Um, we are thinking of the IL-28, which is quite cool. Because um, it kind of is like one of those weird things that looks like a cross between, you know, like a World War II sort of B-17, B-29 style bomber. And then with big jets on it. Um, but yeah, I, I like a lot of those Cold War planes just because they're quite cool. Um, I've got stuff that certainly protects them OK9. Um, and there's a very easy way of testing that. It's literally get the plasma ball with stuff that interferes with it and test containers to see if it blocks interference. Yeah, I've not really listened to much Sabaton, but I know they did stuff like Panzer Battalion, didn't they? The bear's the big one with the propellers on, isn't it, Just Vin? Uh, that was the one that dropped Sarbon, wasn't it, in the South Test, where they had to paint it white to stop it being incinerated by a massive explosion. No, I've not got round to using any of the big crossbows or the big bows on the um, thermoplastic yet. I'll do that at some point. I think I'll probably do things like Warhammer tests and things like that on it before I do the crossbow style tests. Um, but I'd be very interested to see how they perform. But I kind of get the weird feeling it's probably going to stop the majority of the arrows. Um, right, what do I actually listen to at the moment? When I'm just, let me open my media player. And I'll tell you what I've got in there, because I've I listen to a massive different type of genres. Um let me go to genre stuff. So alternative rock and kind of industrial rock, you know, all that sort of stuff, as well as some classic rock. Um prog rock I really like. Um sometimes that'd be called symphonic rock as well. I've got loads of soundtracks on there, a bit of folk music. Um some musical style soundtracks as well. I've got some like 80s pop stuff on there as well, like 80s synth wave kind of stuff. It's mostly, I'd say, soundtracks and kind of industrial or alternative kind of rock stuff. I like stuff like Johnny Cash Shed on Fire, but I'm, I've never been a massive country fan. Um, 
I have, I have nothing against country. You know, I'd rather listen to it than modern pop music. Um, because, yeah, when, when I'm at work and people are like, let's put on, what's it, Capital FM. Oh, no, kill me. But, you know, it's just modern music is like auto-tune, auto-tune, person can't sing auto-tune. They might be TXC Gaming. I've not seen any that have showed up as hidden, like, you know, where I can show them or, like, you know, delete them or whatever. Didn't one of the blokes from Radiohead do the soundtrack for There Will Be Blood? I think it was Radiohead. And was it also Radiohead where the bloke from it did the soundtrack to um, Ravenous? Or am I thinking of the wrong bloke for that? The horrible thing about auto-tune is you can go back far enough and there was auto-tune where it was actually used in an interesting way. Now it seems to be like, oh, it's too much effort for somebody to sing in, you know, proper pitch. That depends what the uh, movie project is in Telebright Films, but... Oh, so sorry, it was Blur for Ravenous. All right, thank you, Mike. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the bloke, somebody Greenwood, was it, from Radiohead that did the There Will Be Blood soundtrack or bits of the There Will Be Blood soundtrack? Oh no, you can think independently, Creamy Turbo. That makes you dangerous. Have you read a book called Fahrenheit 451? The, they're blocking the word bunker now. Oh, for fuck's sake. So I can't have a stream where I talk to people about bunkers. Uh, Night Marcus. Yeah, some of the music used in it is like classical bits. Interestingly, one of the bits used in it, Mike, was also used in the Armando Iannucci show. But if you now try and get some DVDs of the Amando Iannucci show, that music's been taken out for copyright reasons. Oh, yeah, Iron Maiden Motorhead are great. Uh, what was the other one I like? Metallica. I like some Metallica stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I'd rather be in like a fictional type movie project or like a more of like a docudrama documentary type thing. Well, I can make a video, but nobody can leave a comment. Oh, no, so some people are managing to say bunker. Um, I'm going to restore it, TXC Gaming, and live in it most of the time. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix is good. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have to remind me about that tire on the Discord after the stream, because obviously as soon as this stream ends, I'm going out to try and get some footage filmed. So most people can say bunker. This is really weird now. I'm not really a Green Day fan. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't do something like that, Daniel Edwards, where it's like, look like a crazy person in front of a camera, you know. Um... But yeah, if, if it was more somebody wanting to talk to me seriously about something to do with YouTube stuff, I'd be more interested. I've got a Canadian C4 gas mask, Angry Lizard. That's about it. I've got a Canadian C3 somewhere as well, but Canadians destroy their surplus now. It's stupid. Um, but yeah, there's a Canadian C4. Yeah, if if I'm in the film type thing in Telebrite, I'd definitely it would definitely be more if it's just somebody asking you straightforward questions, not oh let's make this person look like a weirdo, you know. I've not heard of Halloween. Yeah, I answered you earlier, Oscaris, and the answer is still yes. Uh the three M masks wouldn't be any better. Uh, it wouldn't have been this particular stream amazing vids, but if you mean watching my videos, thank you. Um, but sadly, I don't think the virus is going away anytime soon. Yeah, I like poison, Richard. That's all right. Your poison. I'll get a copyright strike. And it'll be completely out of tune. But a lot of, like, rock, metal, all that stuff I quite like. Just because if you go back and listen to it now, I don't want this to sound like a nostalgia goggles thing, because I wasn't even alive when a lot of this music came out. The people singing and playing the instruments are far more talented than a lot of the shit that comes out today. Uh, I do Jade a Purple Fox, but we won't go into it too much on here, just because we get some weird people regarding stuff like that. 
as I said earlier, I'm not a massive fan of Green Day. I wouldn't say bad things about Green Day. It's just it wouldn't be music I'd really choose to listen to. Yeah, I like some of David Bowie stuff or David Bowie, whatever it is. It's a shame he died. All right, cool. Um, I'd be interested in seeing what sort of horror stuff you come up with in Telebright films, because as we were complaining about earlier, there's not enough good modern horror done, is there? Could you imagine a Chris a year where Christmas was cancelled? Sounds like the plot of a film, doesn't it? What's the Grinch, maybe? But if you go, if you have a grouse shooting um, day out on Christmas, you can go with your whole family, because you know. Things the Tories are fond of are fine, apparently. Oh, Buccaneers as well. And a Comet. Well, that's a very nice selection of planes. You'll definitely have to remind me to speak up about that on the video. Because, uh, yes. Yeah, Humbug. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Shed on fire. Whenever I've worn masks recently for Halloween, guess what? It's always been this type of masks with filters. Not that I go out trick-or-treating, but whenever I've been invited to go to, like, parties where by the end of the night I can't even remember what's gone on kind of, you know, parties. Um, have you seen shock treatment, Richard? Because I was talking to Mike about it the other day, and Mike hadn't actually seen it. It's kind of like the sequel to Rocky Horror. Um, there's some of the songs in that I really like. Yes, that is a Nixie tube clock. Sadly, it's quite hard to get the, lift that up and get the webcam close enough to it that it will actually focus on it properly. Yeah, cool, I will do tired. You'll just have to remind me to do it not on the stream, because the problem is when people ask me to do stuff on the stream, I forget as soon as the stream ends normally. Um, I've explained that quite a lot of times, Amazing Vids. But the problem is that um, a lot of people kind of selectively listen to stuff. Oh, yeah, Mike, so you've already had to live through that. Yeah, please do, Ty, and then it means I'll see it when I come back. Because the problem is that generally a lot of the times... Even when people get, get me to open tabs of stuff on the stream, I then close the window by accident half the time. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot what they told me to look at. Yeah, this is the thing, Daniel, as I'm saying. it's If you've got the option, wear a proper respirator, you know. I don't even have a plague, Dr. Musk. You know, do you know what the depressing thing is, right? When Corona started... Plague Doctor masks actually, like fancy dress ones, actually started selling out in a lot of places because people were buying them thinking they would protect them. Maybe for Halloween I should dress up as Dominic Cummings and then just do whatever the fuck I want. All right, cheers, Intellibrite Films. It's like, like I said, I'm certainly one of those people that really enjoys watching lots of films, a bit like Mike, you know. Um, as I've got older, I get a lot more into, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff as well. And I really do like, um, you know, like, low-budget stuff as well, you know, a lot, or, like, amateur filmmaking, you know, more like beginner filmmaking, because I have a lot of appreciation when people don't have massive budgets and, you know, clever stuff to work with. They've got to be really creative. The old black and white Scarface, no. The one with, um, what's his name, in Al Pacino? Um, I've definitely seen that one. Well, Jay, the purple fox, they should still let you in if you've got a GP5 on, because it's more protective than the surgical mask. I mean, it's a bit like, if you look how Peter Jackson came along there, wasn't it? Bad taste to Lord of the Rings is a very different experience, but... I can certainly watch Bad Taste and enjoy it. Yeah, Daniel, it's strange that I've been getting that with a lot of the corona stuff to begin with. You had people that thought the um, miasma theory was actually correct and they couldn't understand when I was saying, like, no, it's not, you know. 
No, sadly, I've never been to Canada or America. I'd love to, but at the moment, you can't really book a holiday anyway, can you? I would definitely agree with Daniel there. Yeah, the, the way of just being yourself is just to stop giving a shit what other people think. Because if your mates are generally good people, they'll respect you for who you are. Um, you'll learn pretty quickly who is a very boring person that you want nothing to do with if they say, oh, you're not allowed to have a hobby like that. You know, you're not allowed to like music like that. Um, I mean, obviously, if you had a hobby like murdering children, then that is obviously going too far and you deserve to be locked up. But for the most part, you know, I think most people's hobbies are pretty harmless. So you have to literally log all the time who you come into contact with at school. I mean, I can see why that's a good idea, but again, it's like, if, if we're having to go to that extent, should schools be open? Yes, John Carpenter's The film. Um, John Carpenter's The Thing is amazing. Um, well, I think any infectious thing is like that. I mean, you can watch literally any film about an infectious disease and people will start getting paranoid about what they're doing. The thing is, though, with corona, you can literally wear a respirator and just observe good hygiene. You'll probably be fine. Uh, with the thing, you know, the thing's a bit more dangerous to the earth, I think, than the coronavirus. Uh, as long as you can go several streams without spamming Radiac Maniac, you can trial being a mod for a while. But, um, it could be possible, Dan. You'd have to find a way of contacting me off of YouTube. Um... Just because a lot of the time, if I'm giving out details to people, if they're going to send me something to do a thing on, I like to kind of know a bit more about the person first. I'm all right, Jacob, thank you. What what radiation meter is it anyway? Just in case it's one I might end up having that I've not got round to doing a video on yet, because strangely enough, there are some over there that that's the case with. There's Teespring merch below. If you look below, you should be able to see it. Uh, okay, it's different in different parts of the UK, Jacob. Um, and this is getting really confusing now because different places have different measures. So it could literally be you could drive in your car to somewhere and then you're not allowed to do things that you were allowed to do 30 minutes down the road. Because the thing I can understand it more in the States where obviously each state's got a lot more autonomy, you know, and you know when you're crossing a state boundary. In the UK, it's literally like, oh, this town has a restriction, but this one doesn't. Right, let me Google that one then. KB something or other, da -da 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 Ah, that looks very similar to one I've actually got. Is it an updated model of one of the ones I've done a video on? Let me have a look. I have a weird feeling that is actually like a more modern model of one of the ones I've reviewed, like one of the Chinese ones. Unless I'm being completely incorrect there. Let me just read the description. Battery life for 24 hours. Now, for me, that would be a bit of a make or break feature because some of the things I've got, the little decimeters, have like six months plus battery life. Um, so it detects gamma rays, x rays, and beta radiation. That's all right then. Uh, Dose equivalent rate, oh, it only goes to 5,000 microsieverts. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that if you were using it for actual use. It'd be fine to just work out with something slightly higher than background radiation. Um, just because the issue with it is, if it only goes up to 5,000 microsieverts, that's 5 millisieverts. So basically it measures to about 0 0.5 Ronken. Um, so it's one of those detectors where it can tell you if things are bad, but it can't tell you how bad it is, if that makes sense. Uh, I've got a lot 
uh, WTO Asus at the moment. You'd have to um, watch some of my videos to see the different things I've got. But things like this are my most practical detectors, because how small they are, right? Um, the Radioscan 701A. The Terra P and GMC 500s are some of my favourites at the moment. But there's also really good things like I've been sent to do some videos on this, the Atom Tag. And as I was saying, this is really good because if I can disconnect my phone, this has quite a good radiation range it will go to. And it's absolutely tiny if you think how small this one is, um, you know. Sadly, Shed on Fire, as much as I've met Mike, I think for the most part, there are a bit too many nutters, you know, because of the people calling the police on me, you know, trying to get me fired from my job, all the stuff like that because of, you know, butthurt children on the internet, essentially. Um, so as interesting as it would be shed on fire, I think, sadly, there are a bit too many very strange people out there. <laughs> so you bought a 3M 6200 mask, and I'll get ABEC 1 filters of extra P3 particle film. How long can I use them? All right, so heal if I'm saying your name right. If if you just want particle protection, they'll probably last you months to, if not years, depending on how dusty the environment is you're using them. In terms of how long will they last against vapour, once they're opened a couple of days, depending on how intense the vapour is, uh, vapour filters expire really fast because there's a limited amount of absorption the charcoal can do. Um, I think you've been mostly all right, but again, I'll have to make note of it going forward from several streams. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that there are some people at the moment that would literally be sad enough to call the police on somebody wearing a mask for their own protection. Um, enclosed filters are certainly better, Daniel, as in if you get the ones that are literally like a paper pad sticking out of a mask compared to ones with a plastic case around those same paper pads, the plastic cases really do mean the filters last a lot longer because they won't get knocked by things and get crushed or, you know, get damp as easily. Some of it is kind of just to sell them, Logan. Um, other bits are because some of them are impregnated with various, like, things that do expire pretty quickly. And it also depends how well they factory seal them. Because if they're not particularly well factory sealed, like, you know, food, they'll go out of date. I've got a couple of those Chinese refillable gas mask filters, and they're awful. Unless you're packing more particle stuff into them, which is all right. If you want to use them for vapor, they're just not big enough to have a good amount of charcoal into work. Ideally, a truck can be a combination. You primarily want particle filters, but apparently there can be other stuff mixed in with a tear gas that will, you know, get through the particle filter. Uh, the monitor is a 40-inch Samsung 1080p TV. Um, the PC is whatever the fuck it was last time I read it out. A pretty high-end AMD card where they've obviously brought out a better one since I had that one. And a 3900X processor. Yeah, P3 is like the best thing you can get for COVID protection with what's easily available. Again, if you've got a P3 filter with all the other shit on it, you know, like the whole ABEC thing, yes, it will give you a bit more protection, but not for, you know, the fact it will dry your throat out, it will add more weight. So P3 is by far the best thing you can get in terms of protection. Um, I've got an Avon M15. I've done videos on it, but thank you. Um, if you've not seen my review of it, the Avon M50 I like, but I'd rather have a C50 just because 40 millimeter filters. No, it's because I've got that on the right side of the screen. My screen is this big. Look, if I stretch my arms out, that's me gripping the sides of the screen. It's it's that big. It's a 40-inch monitor. I could have two small monitors, but what's the point? You know, I, I mean, I know for certain jobs, having two monitors would be a lot more useful. For me, I'd rather have a big monitor for watching films on, you know. Um, right, amazing vids. 
I'm trying to think if there's any ones that would last quite a while. Soviet Y2K masks, if you can get the P3 ones, are pretty good, actually, for that. Uh, but what you essentially want is um, a very sort of compact half-face respirator with P3 fil filtration. Um, all right, Peach? I wasn't aware. Oh, where I hugged the screen, I'll get you. Um, let's see. Can I think of any that I've got which would be good models? The Alpha Mesh I've been reusing for ages. Uh, let me just get a thing up for your amazing vids and then the stream's going to end because I've been on for an hour and ten minutes. I may stream tomorrow, I may not. It depends what time I'm awake and what I'm doing because I probably stream in the morning or very early afternoon tomorrow. I don't really feel like streaming in the evening on a Friday because I just kind of want to relax before work. Um... All right, these have actually gone to a good price, it seems. Um, so I've not used this particular one, but I know other people have used it, and they said they're all right. So these ones they call the stealth masks, because these would be reusable, um, and they're not gigantic things. Um, so there you go, amazing vids. If you have a look at that, that's the sort of thing I think regarding prices you'd want because some of the things that are a bit lighter than that aren't going to be as robust and they're still like three quarters of the price of it um i'll link you to some others that are good if there's any for sale for not silly prices uh these are also good i've done a review of these ones um and what was the other one GVS Ellipse, wasn't it? The other one. And I kept wanting to call the Eclipse. Um, and yeah, this is another quite good one. Um, what you'd want them to do, though, is if they're working in a healthcare setting, you'd want them to just put a bit of surgical mask-type material over the exhale valves. That way it's going to filter the air coming out as well as the, um, filtering the air coming in. But yeah. I've not used the stealth one, but most people who've got them say they're good. And the other two I have got, and I can confirm they're good. Not strange, Shed on Fire. If you upload custom thumbnails, that shouldn't ever happen. But... No, that's all right. I don't really have much use for firefighting masks. Thank you. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> no, you can't use this. It's too protective. But yeah, I'd, I'd say look into those. I've seen videos of actual nurses on wards of like proper 3M masks and things like that. So it seems most hospital trusts in the UK are actually being pretty sensible with if you've got something that's more protective to yourself and other people than what you'd be issued, please wear that, you know. But yeah, I'll be going off now. Um, hope everybody enjoyed the stream. It's actually been quite good tonight. We only had a couple of weirdos come on this one, didn't we? We had the um, regular like sexually explicit person. We had the, um, are you on this drug, are you on that drug, are you on that drug guy? Um, and I think we had somebody saying Corona was made up, and I think that was it. Um, just, Beast or sent it me, but you can get them on eBay. Um, they might cost quite a bit, though, um, Comserex. But yeah, Polish surplus, like everywhere else, turns up on eBay. Yep. Yeah. See you all. I'm going to go out and test some night vision uh, to record for a future video.